Well, when it comes to the economy, Anthony Albanese, I think, wins the prize for over-promising and under-delivering. He brought home the 2022 federal election with a promise to lower our power bills and keep more money in our pockets. Two years later, Australia is on the precipice of economic ruin and your power bill is a real life nightmare and Australians are sick of it. This week's news poll, I think, reflects that. The coalition will give Labor a run for its money at the next federal election, with the two major parties finally neck and neck two-party preferred and stand by for a minority government. Now, my next guest is one of Australia's leading tech entrepreneurs who's turned his attention to the demise of this once great country and how immigration is largely to blame for our dud economy. Matt Barry, founder and CEO of Freelancer.com, an online marketplace to help freelancers connect, has foreshadowed a grim economic future if our leaders don't change their ways. Matt joins us right now. Matt, thank you very much for your time. Economically, what are we headed for in this country, do you think? Well, I think everybody knows that there's big problems when the, it takes the average Australian 46 years to save for the average house deposit in Sydney, when you've got the Salvation Army running a survey saying that one in four people they speak to has a fear of becoming homeless, and you've got Suicide Australia quarterbacking the uh, RBA's interest rate announcements, you've got a real issue. Like, I, I think everyone knows that this country has got huge problems. You go to the pub, a beer is now you know, $18, a steak, $50, $60, $70. You know, something is terribly wrong with this country. And at the same time, wages have not kept pace with all of this. And you just wonder, especially in this particular season of winter, how many people are actually turning on their electricity to keep warm? Because that is how bad people are doing it right now, right? That's right. I mean, the price of everything is totally out of control. Uh, everywhere you look, yeah, the, the price, whether it's you know, energy, food, insurance, your rent, uh, your mortgage payments, everything is completely out of control in this country. Now, you're bl laying the blame on immigration, which we've seen blow out astronomically in Australia. They say they want to put a cap on this. We're hearing that from government all the time. But of course, they benefit too much if it blows out, right? Well, yeah, the, the, the cost of living, living crisis that everyone faces is primarily due to the astronomical price of housing in this country, which is completely you know, blown off the roof. I mean, the GFC, already Australians were twice as exposed to residential mortgages as the US and three times the UK and four times as Hong Kong. But since then, prices have continued, continued to rise. And the housing crisis that we have, where you know, the average house price in Sydney now is something like $1.6 million, it's entirely caused by bringing a lot of people into the country. Uh, you've got, you know, back in February, they said 150 5,000 people came to the country in, in, in one month. Uh, you know, where, where are you going to house these people? You know, where, where are you going to give them a job? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's entirely due to out-of-control um, uh, land prices, and that's squeezing businesses uh, with rents. It's caused us to have the highest casual wages in the world, yet anyone on a casual wage can attest they can't afford to live anywhere near they, where they work. Nope. Um, you know, energy prices are completely out of control due to mismanaged energy policy, where it's, it's OK for us to dig up all the coal out of the ground and send it overseas to, to China or someone else to burn, but we can't burn it here and instead we've got to try and make it work with you know, windmills and solar panels. Yeah. You know, yep. it's, it's, it's completely nuts. Uh, it is nuts and young Australians have absolutely no incentive to save and can barely afford to even dream about buying a house. So what we're looking at is a generation of renters. Is this likely to impact future planning for the housing market, do you think? Well, it's even worse if you read the media, um, uh, the, the two main, two main uh, newspapers, you know, the way they say to buy a house you know, at least about a year or two ago was to, uh, you know, borrow to the hilt and they had all these stories about an unemployed, you know, former McDonald's worker that had 20 properties that was surviving on a cash flow of $2,000 a week. If you go read the, you know, the main newspapers today in terms of how young people should survive, it's it turned to OnlyFans or go to the beach looking for a brick of cocaine washing up upon the, upon the waters, right? Like, it's, it's, ab it's absolutely out of control, right? Um, you know, young people, have no chance, it's mathematically impossible for the average Australian to save for the average house.